So now we are on aircraft rule 50. Aircraft rule 50 is for the issue of certificate of airworthiness or special certificate of airworthiness and airworthiness review certificate. So first of all, let us see what is certificate of airworthiness. Certificate of airworthiness is issued for an aircraft by the civil aviation authority in the state in which the aircraft is registered. The CFA attests that the aircraft is airworthy as far as the aircraft conforms to its type design. After the aircraft is registered in the name of the owner, the CFA is issued in one of a number of different categories. The CFA can only be issued when certificate of release to service from the maintenance facility declares that the maintenance due has been carried out and the aircraft is then certified as being airworthy. So, first the aircraft has to be properly maintained. The certifying agency, the maintenance agency should issue a certificate to an effect that the aircraft has been maintained properly as per the requirements of the manufacturer, as per the requirements of the regulatory authority. And once the aircraft is duly certified, the certificate of airworthiness can be issued. About the special certificate of airworthiness, there is a draft CAR by DGCA which is very likely to be implemented. So you can see there is a requirement, there is a civil aviation requirement stating issue or renewal and suspension of special CFA. Airworthiness review certificate, we call it ARC. Airworthiness review certificate ARC of an aircraft signifies that the airworthiness review of the aircraft and its continuing airworthiness records has been carried out and the aircraft complies with all the airworthiness requirements. This review has to be carried out periodically and the certificate is valid for one year. So this review of the aircraft as well as its continuing airworthiness records has to be carried out periodically that is almost every year and once the aircraft is proper maintenance has been carried out, the records are in order, the airworthiness review certificate is issued. So, as per rule 50, the owner or operator of an air aircraft may apply to director general for the issue of CFA or a special CFA in respect of the aircraft or for the validation of a CFA issued elsewhere in respect of the aircraft. So, in case the owner or operator of an aircraft may apply to the director general for the issue of CFA or special CFA in respect of the aircraft. Any aircraft which is imported in the country, it has to be issued with a certificate of airworthiness or a special certificate of airworthiness or if the certificate of airworthiness is issued by some other regulatory authority, that certificate of airworthiness can be validated by the Indian regulatory authority that is DGCA. So in our case, the certificate of airworthiness may be issued or renewed or a special CFA may be issued or validated in respect of an aircraft which is for which the CFA has been issued by some other regulatory authority. The Director General may issue a CFA or special CFA in respect of an aircraft when. So these are the conditions when the CFA or a special CFA in respect of an aircraft can be issued. When the applicant furnishes such documents or other evidence relating to the airworthiness of the aircraft as may be specified by the DG. So whatever documents are required, those documents are furnished, evidence is given that the aircraft is airworthy, the Director General is satisfied that it is airworthy or in a condition for safe operation. So DGCA has to be satisfied that the aircraft is airworthy and is safe for flying, provided that DG may impose such conditions on the special CFA issued as may be necessary for safe operation of the aircraft. And there may be conditions when extra limitations, extra conditions may be imposed on the special CFA for the purpose of safe operation of the aircraft. The DG may validate a certificate of airworthiness in respect of any aircraft that may be imported. 
So any imported aircraft having a certificate of airworthiness issued by the regulatory authority of the country of manufacture or from some other country, that CFA may be validated by the Director General provided the airworthiness authority of the country in which the aircraft is manufactured has issued a CFA or such equivalent documents. Or that means the country where the aircraft is manufactured, the airworthiness authority of that country has first of all issued a certificate of airworthiness or any equivalent document. And in addition to these, the CFA issued by the airworthiness authority of that country, any other airworthiness requirement which is specified by the Director General in India are complied with. Plus, the applicant furnishes necessary documents and technical data relating to the aircraft as may be specified and as the Director General may require. So there are three conditions. First, the CFA has to be issued by the regulatory authority of the country of manufacture. The requirements, the airworthiness requirements specified by the Director General in India, that is DGCA in India, are complied with and any other document, any other technical data which DGCA asks for is provided by the operator. So with these three conditions, the Director General may validate the CFA in respect of any aircraft that may be imported. The CFA or special CFA shall be issued or rendered valid for one or more of the categories as specified by the Director General. So the D certificate of airworthiness or special CFA which is issued or rendered valid, it may be done so in one category or more than one category. The operation of the aircraft shall be restricted in those categories as specified in the CFA or special CFA subject to the conditions stated therein. So the category in which the CFA is issued or the special CFA is issued, the aircraft has to be operated within the limits of those category only, those, that category or those categories only. A certificate of airworthiness issued under this rule shall be invalid unless the Director General or an organization approved under these rules carries out a review of compliance with applicable airworthiness standards and issues an airworthiness review certificate valid for such periods as may be specified therein which may be extended by the Director General or an organization approved under these rules in accordance with such procedures as may be specified by the Director General. So the CFA issued will be invalid until and unless the Director General that is the DGCA or any organization which is approved to do so under these rules carries out a review of the aircraft. The review of the aircraft includes the physical inspection of the aircraft, the, the inspection of the continuing airworthiness records, the standards and once every the in physical inspection, the records, everything is in order, the airworthiness review certificate is issued by either by the DGCA or by any organization which is approved to issue a, the airworthiness review certificate. The airworthiness review certificate may be valid for periods which may be specified in the certificate. Generally it is for one year, it may be limited also, it may be restricted also and this airworthiness review certificate, it can be further extended also by the Director General or by any organization which is approved under the rules to do so. A special CFA shall be valid for such periods as may be specified in the certificate and may be renewed from time to time by the Director General. So again the special CFA which is issued that is also issued for certain period which is specified in the certificate and, is, and it may also be renewed from time to time by the Director General. The aircraft shall be inspected and tested by the Director General or by a person authorized in his behalf. For the purpose of issuing CFA, for the purpose of renewing CFA, for the purpose of validating the CFA, the aircraft may be required to be inspected or and tested by the Director General DGCA or by any person who is authorized on his behalf. The owner or operator of the aircraft shall provide all necessary facilities for the purpose of carrying out the inspection and test as required under sub rule 7 and bear all expenses as specified by the Director General. So it is the responsibility of the owner or operator of the aircraft to provide all the necessary facilities for this inspection and all the expenses are to be borne by the operator. So now 
aircraft rule 50A which, which is for the conditions necessary for the certificate of airworthiness or special certificate of airworthiness and inspection overhaul of aircraft. So, the director general may specify conditions and standards in respect of certificate of airworthiness or special certificate of airworthiness of a particular type or class of aircraft to ensure safety of the aircraft and of persons on board the aircraft having regard to the limitation of the aircraft. So, considering the limitation of the aircraft and for the purpose of the safety of the aircraft and persons on board, <coughs> the director general may specify certain conditions, certain requirements, certain standards to be followed for the certificate of airworthiness or the special certificate of airworthiness to be issued and to remain in force. If at any time the director general considers that any modification, repair, replacement, inspection or overhaul of any aircraft or type of aircraft or of any aircraft component or item of equipment of that aircraft or type of aircraft is necessary in the interest of safety, he may require the modification, repair, replacement, inspection or overhaul to be carried out as a condition of the certificate of airworthiness or special C of A remaining in force. So, if at any point of time the director general considers that some modification, some repair, some replacement, some inspection or overhaul of any aircraft type of aircraft or component or item of equipment is required for the purpose of the safety of the aircraft, the passengers on board and to maintain the airworthiness of that particular aircraft or component. So, any repair, replacement, modification, inspection or overhaul may be required to be carried out and that may be considered as a condition for the certificate of airworthiness to remain in force. Aircraft rule 51 is for the flight manual, where a flight manual is required to be kept in relation to an aircraft in accordance with the provisions of these rules. The director general shall ensure endorse the certificate of airworthiness of the aircraft accordingly. So, there are aircrafts which are required to have flight manual on board. So, wherever the aircraft is required to have flight manual on board that requirement is endorsed on the certificate of airworthiness and the flight manual becomes a part of the certificate of airworthiness and that requirement is endorsed on the certificate. This is a very important rule aircraft rule 52 which is for modification and repairs. This rule gives us the requirements under which the modification and repairs can be carried out the conditions under which the modification and repairs can be carried out. The first condition a person shall not carry out any modification or repair affecting safety of an E aircraft in respect of which there is a valid C of A unless he has been required to do so in pursuance of these rules or unless he has obtained the prior approval of the director general. So, any aircraft which is having a valid C of A cannot be repaired or modified until and unless that repair or modification is required as per these rules or the that particular specific modification and repair has been approved there is a prior approval by the DGCA. Modifications issued by the manufacturer of an aircraft, aircraft component or item of equipment of that aircraft which have been issued a type certificate by the director general or elsewhere may be deemed as approved modifications unless otherwise specified by the director general. So, any modification which is issued by the manufacturer of an aircraft or aircraft component or item of equipment which has been issued with a type certificate by any regulatory authority by the director general or any other regulatory authority can be considered can be deemed to be as an approved modification until and unless it has been specified by the DGCA. The, similarly, the repair schemes issued by the manufacturer of an aircraft, aircraft component or item of equipment of that aircraft issued with a type certificate by the director general or elsewhere and other repairs carried out in accordance with standard aeronautical engineering practice may be deemed as approved unless otherwise specified by the director general. Similarly, as per the modifications, the repair schemes which are issued by the manufacturers 
of the aircraft, aircraft component or item of equipment which are issued with the type certificate by the by any regulatory authority by the director general DGCA or by any other regulatory authority those repairs are considered to be approved until and unless it has been uh, specifically specified by the director general or any standard aeronautical engineering practice is being followed that is considered to be approved. The director general may give prior approval for repair or modification other than those referred to in sub rule 2. Apart from the modifications and repairs which are issued by the manufacturers, there may be modifications and repairs which are required to be carried out which are not given by the manufacturers. In that case, those modifications and repairs are required to be approved by the DGCA. So, the director general may give, may give approval for repair or modification other than those referred to in sub rule 2 of an aircraft, aircraft component or item of equipment of that aircraft where the owner or operator furnishes such evidence relating to the intended modification or repair and its effect on the airworthiness of aircraft as is specified by the director general. So, the owner or operator who wishes to have the repair or modification approved by the director general has to provide evidence regarding the intended modification or repair, repair and has to specify that it is not going to affect the airworthiness of the aircraft as is specified by director general. So, proper evidence has to be provided by the operator. Modifications which have been approved by the director general for one aircraft, aircraft component, item of equipment may be incorporated in others of the same type provided it is within the terms of approval. So, any modification which is approved by the DGCA for one aircraft or aircraft component or item of equipment, it can be incorporated on the same type of aircraft or aircraft component provided it is within the terms of approval. While an aircraft has been modified or repaired after a major damage or major defect, the aircraft shall not be flown until an appropriately licensed engineer or an authorized person has certified in the manner <coughs> specified by the director general that, that the aircraft is in a fit condition to be flown for purpose of experiment or test as the case may be. So, any aircraft which has been modified or repaired after a major damage or a major defect, it cannot be flown until and unless an appropriately licensed engineer or an authorized person has certified the aircraft as per the rules and the aircraft is in a fit condition to be flown for the purpose of experiment or test as the case may be. While an aircraft component or item of equipment has to be modified or repaired, it shall not be released until it is certified by an appropriately licensed engineer or an authorized person as may be specified by the director general. Similarly, in the case of any aircraft component or item of equipment which has to be modified or repaired, it should not be released until and unless it is certified by an appropriately licensed engineer or an authorized person as per the requirements specified by the director general. The form and manner of distribution of the certificate and its copies referred to in the above sub rules and preservation thereof shall be as may be specified by the director general. So, the format, the distribution of the certificate, the distribution of the certificate and its copies should be as per the requirements specified by the DGCA. A certificate in pursuance of the preceding sub rules shall not be issued unless the materials, parts, method comply with such designs, drawings, specifications or instructions as may be issued by the manufacturers or as may be specified or approved by the director general. So, the above aircraft or the aircraft components, they cannot be released, they cannot be certified until and unless the materials, parts and methods comply with the designs and drawings, specifications or instructions issued by the manufacturer or by the DGCA. So, any maintenance which has to be carried out for the purpose of modification or repair on any aircraft, aircraft component, item of equipment. In that, <coughs> in, during that maintenance, the parts, the methods, the materials, they should comply with all the designs, drawings, specifications 
or instructions issued by the manufacturers or by the DGCA. The method and workmanship shall be in accordance with the standard aeronautical practices or as may be approved by the Director General. In doing the modification and repair, the methods and the workmanship to be followed shall be in accordance with the standard aeronautical practices or as per the practices which are approved by the DGCA. Now coming to aircraft rule 53, rule 53 is for use of materials, processes, parts and periodical overhaul of aircraft. Every aircraft required under these rules to be provided with a certificate of airworthiness and aircraft components and items of equipment on such aircraft shall periodically be inspected, overhauled and certified on completion of the prescribed flight time or calendar time or on the basis of any other stipulated condition in accordance with the approved maintenance schedules or approved maintenance system. Such inspection and certification shall be affected by appropriately licensed engineers or authorized persons as may be specified by the Director General. So every aircraft which is required to have a certificate of airworthiness and aircraft components, items of equipment on such aircraft, they are required to be periodically inspected, overhauled and certified on completion of the prescribed flight time, calendar time or on the basis of any other stipulated condition in accordance with the approved maintenance schedules or approved maintenance system. So all the components, items of equipment which are used on the aircraft have a certain life. Generally we call it a TBO that is the time between overhaul. So once that life is completed, that life may be in the form of flying hours, it may be in the form of calendar time it may be in the form of cycles, it may be in the form of landings. So whatever is the prescribed life of that particular component or equipment, it needs to be inspected or overhauled or certified and certified sorry uh, after that inspection or overhaul. And that has to be done in accordance with the approved schedules and the approved maintenance system. Such inspections and certifications shall be affected by appropriately licensed engineers or authorized persons as may be specified by the Director General. So this inspection and certification has to be done by appropriately licensed engineers or authorized persons as specified by the DGCA. A certificate to be issued in pursuance of sub rule 1 shall not be issued unless the materials, processes, parts, method comply with such designs, drawings specifications or instructions as may be issued by the manufacturers or as may be specified or approved by the Director General. Like in the previous rule, similarly in this rule also, any maintenance, any overhaul, any inspection which is carried out has to be in that maintenance, the materials being used, the processes, the parts, the methods should comply with all the designs, drawings, specifications or instructions which are issued by the manufacturers or as may be specified by the Director General. The method and workmanship shall be in accordance with the standard aeronautical practices or as may be approved by the Director General. Notwithstanding the foregoing provisions, the Director General may grant exemption by general or special order in writing to any person or class of persons from the operation of the foregoing sub rules either wholly or partly subject to such conditions if any as may be specified in such order. So the Director General has the powers to exempt any of the condition either wholly or partly. The Director General may grant exemption to any person or class of persons from the operation of the foregoing sub rules either wholly or partly. So the above requirements may be waived off wholly or partly and that powers are with the DGCA. Aircraft rule 53A is for the manufacture, storage and distribution of all aircraft. The manufacture, storage and distribution of aircraft, aircraft components and items of equipment of any other material used or intended to be used in an aircraft 
whether or not a CFA has been or is required to be issued, renewed or rendered valid for such aircraft under these rules shall be undertaken and certified only by approved organizations, by licensed engineers or by authorized persons in this behalf. The form and manner and the distribution of the certificate and its copies and preservation thereof shall be as specified by the Director General. Aircraft Rule 54 is for the persons who are authorized to certify. The certification required under Parts 6, 12B and 13A of these rules shall be signed by appropriately licensed engineers or authorized persons qualified under the terms and conditions of the license, authorization or approval as the case may be to carry out or inspect the manufacture, process, modification, repair, replacement, overhaul or maintenance to which the certificate relates or by an approved person or by a person or persons holding written authorization for certification from an approved organization in accordance with the criteria specified by the Director General and the certificate is signed as per the authorization or when these have been carried out at a suitably equipped Indian Air Force establishment by its officer in charge. So any manufacture, process, modification, repair, replacement, overhaul or any maintenance, it can be, it has to be certified by appropriately licensed engineers or authorized persons who are qualified to do so under the conditions specified on the licenses or the authorizations or approvals. These persons, these approved persons, persons having license should have written authorizations for certification from an approved organization in accordance with the criteria specified by the DGCA. Provided that in one or more class of aircraft subject of the work, such of the work if performed in accordance with approved procedures, practices and methods as specified, as may be specified by the DG need not be supervised or certified by the approved organization, licensed engineers or authorized persons in this behalf. Aircraft Rule 55 is for suspension or cancellation of CFA or special CFA and its continued validity. The certificate of airworthiness or special CFA of an aircraft shall be deemed to be suspended when an aircraft ceases or fails to conform with the requirements of these rules in respect of operation, maintenance, modification, repair, replacement, overhaul, process or inspection applicable to that aircraft or is modified or repaired otherwise than in accordance with the provisions of these rules or suffers major damage or develops a major defect which would affect the safety of the aircraft or its occupants in subsequent flights. The CFA or special CFA can be considered to be suspended or deemed to be suspended or cancelled if it is not maintained or if it does not conform to the requirements in respect of the operation, maintenance, modification, repair, replacement, overhaul, process or inspection as per the manufacturer's guidelines or as per the regulatory requirements or if that aircraft is modified or repaired other, other than the conditions which are specified in these rules or the requirements specified by the manufacturers or the aircraft suffers major damage or the aircraft develops a major defect which affects the safety of the aircraft or its comp occupants. So in either of these conditions, the, air, the CFA of the aircraft is deemed to be suspended or it can be cancelled. If at any time the Director General is satisfied that reasonable doubt exists as to the safety of an aircraft or as to the safety of the type to which the aircraft belongs, he may suspend or cancel the CFA of or special CFA in respect of the aircraft or require the aircraft or an aircraft component or an item of equipment of that aircraft to undergo such modification, repair, replacement, overhaul, inspection including flight tests and examination under the supervision of an approved person as the Director General may specify as a condition of the certificate of airworthiness remaining in force. So if at, an, if at any point of time the Director General, the DGCA is satisfied that there is a reasonable doubt 
that the aircraft operation is not safe, the aircraft safety is, in, is doubtful, the C of A may be suspended or cancelled or the special C of A may be suspended or cancelled in respect of that aircraft. The DGCA may require that the aircraft or aircraft component or item of equipment of that aircraft should undergo modification, repair, replacement, overhaul, inspection including flight tests and examination under the supervision of approved persons as the director general may specify. So these, they, these conditions may be imposed so that the certificate of airworthiness can be considered to be remaining in force. Subject to sub rule 4, an aircraft shall not be flown during any period for which its C of A or special C of A is suspended or deemed to be suspended. Where the C of A or the special C of A of an aircraft is suspended or deemed to be suspended, the DG may upon an application by the owner or operator issue a special flight permit under rule 55A. A special flight permit under rule 55A may be issued if required when the C of A or special C of A is suspended or deemed to be suspended. Aircraft rule 55A is for the issue of special flight permit. The Director General may issue a special flight permit when an aircraft is not fully in compliance with the airworthiness requirements, but it is in a condition for safe operation subject to such conditions as are specified in the special flight permit. We have just seen in the above rule that there may be conditions where the C of A may be suspended or deemed to be suspended. In that, that is the case when the aircraft is not fully in compliance with the airworthiness requirements, but it may be in a condition for safe operation. In these conditions, the Director General may issue a special flight permit. The owner or operator of an aircraft may apply to Director General for the issue of a special flight permit in respect of the aircraft for any of the purposes as specified by the Director General. So the owner or operator of an aircraft can request the Director General for issue of a special flight permit in any of the conditions. The direct Director General may issue a special flight permit in respect of an aircraft when an applicant furnishes such documents as may be specified by the DG and the DG is satisfied that the aircraft is in a condition for safe operation. So in the request to DGCA, the applicant has to furnish documents as required by the DGCA and the DGCA has to be convinced, has to be satisfied that the aircraft is in a condition for safe operation. Coming to aircraft rule 56, this is for the Indian aircrafts operating outside India. When an aircraft registered in India is operating in a country outside India, the aircraft or any of its components or items of equipment shall not be modified, repaired, replaced, inspected or overhauled except by or under the supervision of and certified by. So any of our aircraft, any of the aircraft which is registered in India is operating outside India. In that case too, the aircraft or any of its components or items of equipment cannot be modified, repaired, replaced, inspected or overhauled except by or under the supervision of and certified by. In the case of a contracting state, a person who is approved for the purpose by the appropriate authority of contracting state in accordance with the minimum requirements adopted in pursuance of the convention and recognized by the director general as sufficient for the purpose. In case the aircraft is operating in a contracting state, then the, if required, the repair, the replacement, inspection, overhaul or modification can be done by the person who is approved for that purpose by the regulatory authority of that contracting state in accordance with the minimum requirements that are adopted in pursuance of the convention and those requirements have to be recognized by the director general as sufficient for that purpose. In the case of a country other than contracting state, in case our, the Indian registered aircraft is operating in a country other than the contracting state, a person who possesses qualifications which are recognized by the director general as sufficient for the purpose. So in case an Indian registered aircraft is operating in a country other than a contracting state, then any repair replacement, modification, inspection or overhaul if required can be carried out by a person who possesses qualification which are recognized by the DGCA. For the purpose of this rule, foreign aircraft following under sub rule 3 of rule 1 
shall be deemed as aircraft registered in India and Indian aircraft falling under sub rule 4 of rule 1 shall be deemed as aircraft not registered in India. Coming to aircraft rule 57 which is for instruments and equipments, every aircraft shall be fitted and equipped with the instrument and equipment including radio apparatus and special equipment as may be specified by the director general according to the use and circumstances under which the flight is to be conducted. So, every aircraft which is fitted and equipped with the instruments and equipments which including radio apparatus and special equipment should be as specified by the director general according to the requirement the circumstances under which the flight has to be conducted. Such instruments and equipments shall be of an approved type and installed in a manner in an approved manner and shall be maintained in a serviceable condition. Aircraft rule 58 is for weight and balance. So, every aircraft shall be weighed and appropriately marked and center of gravity determined. The weight schedule and the load sheet indicating the calculated center of gravity position relating to the required configurations shall be displayed or carried on board an aircraft subject to such conditions as may be specified by the director general. So, every aircraft has to be weighed and it has to be properly marked, appropriately marked. The weight has to be marked on the aircraft, the center of gravity has to be determined and the weight schedule and the load sheet which indicates the calculated center of gravity positions relating to the required configuration. They it has to be carried on board, the weight schedule has to be properly displayed in the aircraft. An aircraft shall not attempt to take off, fly or land at a weight in excess of the maximum permissible weight as is specified in the certificate of airworthiness or as authorized by the director general. So, no aircraft should attempt to fly, should attempt to take off or land beyond the weight in excess of the maximum permissible weight as specified in the CFA. The load of an aircraft throughout a flight including takeoff and landing shall be so distributed that the CG position of the aircraft falls within the limitations specified or approved by the director general. So, so the load of an aircraft through which throughout the flight which includes your takeoff and landings should be should be so distributed that the CG position of the aircraft is falls within the limitations specified or approved by the DG provided that the director general may by special order in writing and subject to such conditions as may be specified in that order exempt any aircraft from the operation of this rule. So, the DGCA has the power to exempt any aircraft from this rule. Aircraft rule 59 defects and defective parts a major defect in or a major damage to an aircraft registered in India shall be reported in the manner specified by the director general. So, any major defect or any major def damage on the aircraft registered in India has to be reported to the director general. When any part of an aircraft is revealed or suspected to be defective, the DG may require it to be delivered to a person or organization authorized by him in this behalf for examination. So, any aircraft which is suspected or revealed to be defective, the DGCA may require it to be delivered to a person or organization for the purpose of examination. So, that person or organization may be authorized by the DGCA. Coming to rule 59A defects in a foreign aircraft. So, any aircraft which is operating in our country, but is not registered in India in case if that aircraft encounters any defect then what is the rule in that case. So, rule 59A deals with the defects in a foreign aircraft. When an aircraft registered outside India, whilst in an Indian territory sustains major damage or a major defect is found, the director general on ascertaining that fact may prohibit the aircraft from flying. So, any aircraft which is registered outside India, but is operating within the Indian territory sustains major damage or major defect the director general the DGCA after ascertaining that fact may prohibit that aircraft from flying in the Indian territory. Where in pursuance of sub rule 1 the director general prohibits an aircraft from flying he shall furnish to the appropriate authority of the country of registration of the aircraft information of the action which he has taken and a report of the damage suffered or defect found. In the case when the foreign registered aircraft is restricted is prohibited 
from flying in the Indian territory. In that case, DGCA will report to the appropriate authority of the country of that of the registration of that aircraft, information of the action, the DGCA will inform that regulatory authority about the grounding of the aircraft, the prohibition of on flying of the aircraft and the report of the damage suffered or defect found will also be forwarded to that regulatory authority. The prohibition imposed in pursuance of sub rule 1 shall not be removed until the appropriate authority of the country of registration of the aircraft notifies to the director general. So this prohibition shall not be removed until the appropriate authority of that country of manufacture, that country of registration of the aircraft notifies DGCA that the damage or defect suffered or ascertained has been removed. So first the regulatory authority of the country of registration needs to satisfy itself that the aircraft which had suffered damage or defect that is airworthy and that the damage suffered or defect found or ascertained is not of such a nature as to prevent minimum requirements of safety adopted in pursuance of the convention. Either that regulatory authority has to ensure that the damage or defect suffered or ascertained has been removed or they have to certify, they have to mention that the damage suffered or defect found or ascertained is not of such a nature that prevents minimum requirements of safety adopted in pursuance of the convention or that in the circumstances of a particular case the aircraft should be permitted to fly without passengers to a place at which it can be restored to an airworthy condition or there may be a condition, there may be circumstances where the aircraft may be required to fly without passengers to a place where the aircraft can be restored to an airworthy condition. So the regulatory authority of the country of registration of that aircraft needs to inform DGCA whether the damage or defect ascertained or suffered has been removed or the damage suffered or defect found is not of the nature that prevents minimum requirements of safety adopted in pursuance of the convention or there is a condition that the aircraft needs to be flown without passenger to a place where it can be restored to an airworthy condition. So the regulatory authority of the country of registration needs to inform the director general. In removing the prohibition imposed in pursuance of sub rule 1, the director general may impose such conditions on the operation of the aircraft as are notified to him by the appropriate authority of the country of registration of the aircraft. So in order to remove that prohibition imposed on flying of the foreign registered aircraft, DGCA may impose certain conditions on the operation of the aircraft which are notified to DGCA by the appropriate authority of the country of registration of the aircraft. Coming to aircraft rule 60 which is for maintenance standards and certification. In this rule maintenance refers to performance of all work necessary for the purpose of ensuring that the aircraft is airworthy and safe including servicing of the aircraft and all modifications, repairs, replacements, overhauls, processes, treatment, tests, operation and inspection of the aircraft, aircraft components and items of equipment required for that purpose. The director general may in respect of any aircraft, aircraft component and item of equipment specify standards and conditions for continuing airworthiness of the aircraft and its maintenance. The director general shall notify the maintenance requirements and approve the maintenance system keeping in view the continued airworthiness of the aircraft and the maintenance facilities required, the period in terms of flight time, calendar time or any other basis which may elapse with safety between inspections, tests or overhauls or any other maintenance work, the content and period of preservation of the records kept in respect of maintenance, type of operation in which the aircraft is engaged, any conditions like dust, salt air, climatic conditions or other factors and the routes flown or bases used which may have an effect upon airworthiness and any other relevant considerations. So you have seen that the director general can notify maintenance requirements and can approve the maintenance system keeping in view the following conditions where the continued airworthiness of the aircraft and maintenance facilities whatever the facilities are required what is what continued airworthiness of the aircraft is required the period in terms of flight time, calendar time or any other basis which may elapse with safety between inspections, tests or overhauls or any other maintenance work, the content and the period of preservation of records in respect of maintenance, type of operation in which the aircraft is engaged 
and, and the conditions in which the aircraft is being operated like dust conditions, salt air climatic conditions or the routes which are being followed. Any aircraft engaged in public transport, aircraft, public transport including aerial work and flying training shall not be flown unless it has been maintained in accordance with such requirements as may be specified by the director general. Maintenance of aircraft has been carried out by or under the supervision of a person licensed or authorized under rule 61 or authorized in writing by an approved maintenance organization in accordance with the criteria specified by the director general. And all maintenance carried out has been certified by appropriately licensed engineers or authorized persons within the period specified by means of such a certificate as may be prescribed by the director general. The contents, form, period or validity, preservation of the certificate shall be in such form and manner as may be specified by the director general. So you can see no aircraft shall commence any flight if subsequent to the issue of a certificate in pursuance of this rule has suffered any damage or revealed any defect other than items covered in the approved list of deficiencies which would render the aircraft unsafe for flight and which would not in accordance with the ordinary aeronautical practice be remedied by the pilot or crew. In this condition, the aircraft should not be flown. Microlight, light sport aircraft, gyroplane, glider, balloon or an airship shall be certified by an aircraft maintenance engineer holding a license in category A or category B1 or category B3 or an authorized person subject to the requirements as specified by the director general. Provided that the director general may by general or special order and subject to such conditions as may be specified in that order exempt any aircraft from the operation of this rule. Now coming to CR, we can see uh, we have just concluded the part 6 of the Indian aircraft rules that was airworthiness which was from rule number 49 to rule number 60. The, there is aircraft rule 61 and 62 also in the airworthiness section. Now we are seeing civil aviation requirements. You can see there are various sections in CAR. Section 1 is for general, section 2 is airworthiness, section 3 air transport, section 4 aerodrome standards and licensing, section 5 air safety, section 6 design standards and type certification, section 7 flight crew standards training and licensing, section 8 aircraft operations, section 9 airspace and air navigation service standards, section 10 aviation environmental protection, section 11 safe transport of dangerous goods by air. So there are various sections, section 1 to section 11 in the CAR. We are mainly concerned with section 2 which is the airworthiness. In addition to this, there are more civil aviation requirements which are applicable to airworthiness part. One is CARM, this is just a, uh, we are just mentioning the different CARs here. We have provided a link also. You can see CARM which is continuing airworthiness requirements. The link has been provided for CARM for details you can go to this link. CAR 145 which is for approval of maintenance organizations. CAR 25 which is certification procedures for aircraft and related products and parts. The link has been provided. CAR 147 which is for approved basic maintenance training organization. And CR 66 is for licensing of aircraft maintenance engineers. We will see what is CARM, continuing airworthiness requirements. CARM specifies certain technical requirements to be complied by organizations and personnel involved in the maintenance of aircraft and aeronautical products, parts and appliances in order to demonstrate the capability and means of discharging the obligations and associated privileges thereof. The CARM also specifies conditions of issuing, maintaining, amending, suspending or revoking certificates attesting such compliance. This CAR lays down the requirements of continuing airworthiness and which are harmonized by, with EASA Part M regulation. The CARM is applicable to all operators of Indian registered aircraft irrespective of whether such aircraft are maintained by their own organization or by other approved maintenance organization. For organization operating aircraft, Compliance with this CAR is mandatory. The compliance will also depend upon the size of the organization. 
The applicability will include private operators, general aviation, flying training institutes, state governments, etc. Now coming to CIR 145 which is for approval of maintenance organizations. CIR 145 was introduced on 26 January 2005 in order to harmonize requirements for approval of aircraft maintenance organizations with that of international requirements which was primarily based on EASA part 145 regulation. Since the initial issue of CIR 145, it has been revised from time to time to synchronized with EASA part 145. CIR 145 is applicable for organizations involved in the maintenance of complex motor powered aircraft or of aircraft used for commercial air transport and components intended for fitment thereto shall be approved in accordance with the provisions of this CIR. Coming to CR21 which is certification procedures for aircraft and related products and parts. CR21 prescribes procedural requirements for issue of type certificates and changes to these certificates, issue of certificate of airworthiness, issue of noise certificate and issue of export airworthiness certificate. It covers matters related to design, manufacture and all other issues related to airworthiness including continued airworthiness repairs etc. CR21 also contains requirements for approval of design and protection organizations as per the provisions of rule 133B. CR147 which is for approved basic maintenance training organization. CR147 basic specifies the requirements to be met by organizations seeking approval to conduct aircraft maintenance training and examinations as specified in CR66. The CR147 specifies conditions for issue, renewal, suspension and revocation of certificates attached to the approval and privileges thereof. Initially the basic knowledge examination will be conducted by DGCA, however once the systems and procedures are well established and the DGCA is confident that the institutes are mature to conduct the knowledge examination, they may be allowed to conduct knowledge examinations in phase manner on behalf of DGCA. This CR provides the technical standards and guidelines for the approval of aircraft maintenance training organizations. Coming to CR 66 which is for licensing of aircraft maintenance engineers. In order to harmonize Indian requirements for licensing of aircraft maintenance engineers with international requirements, CR 66 dated 11th November 2011 was introduced. The CR 66 is applicable to all personal organizations engaged in the maintenance and or certification of aircraft registered in India. The CR 66 details requirements for qualifying an individual to obtain an aircraft maintenance engineer's license and extension of such license. This is about you can see these are this is about the CR 66 it mentions that it eliminates the system of obtaining airframe, engine, electrical instrument and radio system licenses separately. It redefines the syllabus for basic knowledge examination in modular pattern, provides for endorsement of an AME license after successful completion of type training and the type training examination, type examination which shall consist of both theoretical and practical examinations, lists the details of practical tasks to qualify an individual to obtain a type rating, provides for acquiring group type rating of aircraft and certification privileges, has a provision to convert the existing AME license to CR66 license with or without limitation. 